Hi, this is Stephen from Own or Disown. In today's video, I'm going to compare the Radeon RX 5600M that is found in the 2020 Dell G5 Special Edition to the GTX 1660 Ti in the ASUS TUF A15 and the RTX 2060 Max-Q found in both the ASUS G14 and the G15. All the laptops have a Ryzen 8-core 16-thread CPU that do perform similarly and have 16GB of 3200MHz RAM running dual-channel. Now, according to Frank Azor, the 5600M is a 90 to 100 watt part, and he says it should be close to an 80 watt 2060. In the Dell G5, that has a max system power of 116 watts, the CPU pulls about 35 watts, so the best case situation in this G5 is that the 5600M uses about 80 watts. I use high performance or turbo modes on each laptop. In total, I have 11 tests four of which just include the 5600M and the 2060 Max-Q because I didn't have the data for the 1660 Ti. First up is 3D Mark's Time Spy and Fire Strike, showing the GPU score. Now there is literally 1% separating all three cards, so it certainly doesn't look like the 5600M is going to be as fast as a full 2060. So let's take a look at some games. First up is Battlefield 5 using DX11 Ultra settings using the Rotterdam map. The 5600M is on top, the 1660 Ti is in the center, and the 2060 Max-Q is at the bottom. All three GPUs have good GPU utilization, and at ultra settings, they seem to be pretty similar. And indeed, there's only three FPS separating them, but this gap widens slightly as we do lower quality settings. It's interesting to note that the 5600M seems to have the lowest minimum frame rate. For Far Cry 5, I use the inbuilt benchmark, and it certainly seems that the NVIDIA cards are being better utilized, and thus it looks like the 5600M falls behind in this game. And this is at ultra settings. The 1660 Ti and the 2060 Max U are pretty similar, and the 5600M is about 10% behind, and the trend continues as we lower quality settings. Fortnite was tested playing the game. If we average out the epic, high, and medium setting results, we get a pretty similar performance between all three cards. Certainly, the 5600M is not way ahead like we were led to believe. Rainbow Six Siege was tested using the inbuilt benchmark at ultra settings and 100% scaling. The 5600M was about 9% slower here, and the minimums were over 20% behind. This is actually quite disappointing. Red Dead Redemption 2 was tested using the inbuilt benchmark at high settings. Anisotropic filtering and the multi sampling anti aliasing was set to times 4. All three cards have a great dupe utilization, and there's nothing separating them at all. Despite the low dip noted for the 1660 Ti, I would say that all three cards handle the game pretty much the same. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I use the inbuilt benchmark DX12 higher settings. All three have a good dupe utilization, but the 5600M in the G5 does seem to fall behind slightly. I believe this is due to the lower CPU clock rate that is a result of the AMD Smart Shift shifting power away from the CPU to the GPU. There isn't a huge difference, the 5600M is 7% behind the 1660 Ti. For the following four games, I am just comparing the 5600M to the 2060 Max-Q as I had insufficient data on the 1660 Ti in the ASUS A15. So Assassin's Creed Odyssey is tested using the inbuilt benchmark the 5600M is at the top, and the 2060 Max-Q at the bottom. Again, we see the CPU in the Dell G5 with a lower clock rate, due to smart shift, and the GPU utilization is a little bit more erratic. We see swings from 70% to 96%, whilst the 2060 Max-Q is much more steady. The end result is that the 2060 Max-Q is some 13% ahead on average frame rate, and the 5600M minimums do take a bit of a beating. Perhaps this is a title that smart shift needs to be better optimized for. Now onto Metro Exodus using DX12 Ultra settings, and for this I use the opening sequence of the game. GPU utilization is about the same for both, despite the lower CPU clock for the Dell G5, and performance looks quite comparable. And indeed, there is very little separating the 2060 Max-Q from the 5600M here. In Star Wars Battlefront 2, both the CPU and GPU utilizations look about the same, despite the lower CPU clock on the all AMD system. It doesn't seem to be impacting performance that much. And in fact, it looks like the 5600M has a slight lead, consistent across all the quality settings, so that is great to see. Finally, we have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and this was tested using the opening sequence of the game. 
Again, we see SmartShift lowering the CPU clocks on the Dell G5, and I would say that the GPU utilization on the 2060 Max Q is slightly higher and a bit more consistent. The end result being that the 2060 Max Q is about 9% faster, and this was consistent as we lowered quality settings. So let's average out the results. I use the ultra and high settings to reduce the influence that the CPU could have and average out the frame rate and compare it as a percentage to the 5600M. Now out of 11 tests, two were in favor of the 5600M and two were even, leaving seven that held an advantage for Nvidia from three to 13%. The average for both the 1660 Ti and the 2060 Max-Q was 4%, so it's not a huge difference and it's something that extra work from AMD's driver team and further optimization of the smart shift it, you know, that should be able to fix it. It would be interesting to revisit this six months from now and see if indeed the 5600M will be closer to the 2060 Max P. I hope you found this useful. The review on the Dell G5 Special Edition will be up soon, as will reviews on the Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3 and Asus Nitro 5 with the Ryzen 4600M, so make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on those. Bye.